Citizens of the United Homa Nation in Louisiana are reeling from the impact of Hurricane Ida. Besides causing power outage, really devastation for homes and evacuations, even now, even more rain is expected. There still isn't internet access. We're lucky to have the principal chief join us now by phone to talk about this disaster and what's needed next. Welcome, Principal Chief August Krippel. Alito Omasia, the UPJ, Miko Omas, MSC Bonjour, MSC Pohodri. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as you take a look at the what happened, maybe describe that first. Well, a little bit about what we went down, through down here in, in, in Homa, which we uh, a little bit southwest of New Orleans in. Um, United Homa Nation is the largest tribe in Louisiana out of 15 tribes. We have 19,000 members and we spread out in six different parishes down here. We don't have counties. We're still under French law in Louisiana. We have parishes and all six of our parishes are along the Gulf Coast and all six of our parishes got hit from Hurricane Ida. And, um, you know, we had sustained winds of 150 miles an hour for over 12 hours and much of our community along the Gulf uh, is wiped out. It looked like, you know, a, a, a bomb came in and just destroyed everything. A lot of our, there's some areas we're still unable to get into. And um, we're still trying to work our way through there. And my profession, I'm a firefighter for 40 years. And, um, you know, some of these areas, I, I have never seen this much, you know, destruction and disaster you know, since since I've been a firefighter. And, um, you know, some areas we still aren't able to get into. And, um, but, um, you know, from, from pictures we've seen from the air and stuff from people that were sending to me, you know, like I said, again, it looked like a bomb came in and just wiped everything out, you know. Uh, um, we still have people we unaccounted for, you know, we still, trying to contact our citizens, you know. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's just hard as the chief, you know, to, uh, to see this much disaster and, and, and the pain that, you know, my people are going through. And, and, you know, there's hardly anything we can do, but, you know, and help them out as much as we can, you know, myself and, and, and our tribal council. What's the best way for people elsewhere to help? Well, we set up a fund. If you want to go to unitedhomenation.org, and um, you can go to our website and our page, and you know, we're going to have a, uh, set up a website on there for, uh, for donations and things. And, you know, uh, uh, my wife is from the, the Lumbee Tribe in North Carolina, and some of the churches from there reached out, and we have you know, other people reaching out, other tribes reaching out to uh, to help out as much as they can and send donations, being in charge, of, you know, in contact with the Red Cross. And, you know, and as a state tribe, we're not federally recognized, but, um, you know, we, we get no special, no special treatment as a tribe. You know, we have to wait in line like everybody else here in the state of Louisiana. And, most of the time we get more done by, you know, other native communities coming together and helping us out and us doing it on our own and, and the help we get from the state. Yeah. Let me um, ask, with 19,000 tribal citizens, how do you get word about who's safe and what help they need? Well, we, we you know, before the hurricane and stuff, we, we sent out messages to people that we had contact information on. And we we did social media, in media, and, and you know I put a um, I put a message out there, you know, for our people. The best thing for them to do is, you know, to evacuate. But you know, we are a poor community, and a lot of our people can't afford to evacuate. You know, we try to get them out as much as possible. But um, you know, it, it takes several hundred dollars for for people to move in. You know, sometimes they go and they don't know if they're going to be back in a day or two. But down here right now, you know, it, it can be weeks or months before some people can get back to where they used to live. Even if they still have a house, like I said, there's some areas that we were unable to reach because we still can't get there. 
Let me ask you what it was like for yourself to go through this. Well, you know, I, I, as a firefighter for 40 years, uh, you, know, you know, I wrote out many hurricanes and things. And, you know, this, you know, was the end of the 16th year anniversary of Katrina when this hurricane came in. And, um, you know, it brought back memories and things. You know, I worked 22, 24 hour shift for Katrina. And I'm already on my sixth day at work and don't know, you know, how long I'll be here or because they, they, you know, they don't know when the powers will come back on in some areas. They hope in a week, you know, some areas might not get power for, for months, you know, and because it, it's just a disaster here. I know it's too early to talk about climate change, but this is something that you've had to face already in lots of different ways. Um, are is there fears that things are getting worse in that sense? Oh yeah, climate change and you know down here is very bad. Climate change and coastal erosion, you know, this is something you know our people deal with every day. You know, I mean, uh, um, down here a lot of our people have to you know put their their houses up on, on pollens and stuff, and you know because just just with a, a, a southwest wind or you know coming in, people can have two or three foot of water in their yards, but um. You know, uh, uh, with a hurricane, you know, uh, category four, you know, if this is the strongest hurricane in history to hit this area with 150 miles an hour winds over 12 hours, you know, but coastal erosion and, and, you know, climate change, this is something Native people have been dealing with, you know, for many years. And, and you know, uh, uh, our people deal with it every day. You know, I, I had elders take me out sometimes in fishing lakes that just 50 years ago, you know, was farmland. They they grew crops and stuff there, or they had cattle there. And now there's six to eight foot of water in some of these areas where, where you fish at, you know? Well, I guess that will really factor in when, you, when the rebuilding starts is to think about what can last through, I hate to say it, but 150 mile an hour winds. Right. Yeah. Like I said, you know, if they even have something to rebuild, you know, because our people, you know, they ask, well, why you live there? You know, so like they ask in return, well, why you live where you live? This is where my parents grew up. This is where my grandparents grew up. You know, this is the area we knew, you know, so my people can go out in the backyard with a fishing pole and, and catch dinner, you know, but this is, this is just the lifestyle they grew up and. Some of them are going to go back and, and rebuild, and some is going to move other places, you know. Going back to the Katrina thing, you know, I tell people, you know, um, you know, some people moved away, and, and some people came back and rebuilt, you know. They, but some people still never got over this, you know, emotionally and mentally, you know. And, and the same thing with this, this hurricane here, you know, it's going to take years for, you know, to just, you know, to recuperate from this and, and rebuild and stuff. And, you know, and again, you know, as the chief of the tribe, you know, with 19,000 people and I have 7,000 people, that their lives change, you know, just in a few hours, you know, and it, it hurts my heart to know that there's nothing, you know, I, I, I could do to make anything different, you know, but just to, you know, stand by and, and and help them rebuild if that's what they want to do and, and support them in every way, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, and, and just to be there as much as I can for my people. As you say, rebuilding is going to take some time. What's the most immediate need? What's needed right now? The most immediate need when I talk to Red Cross and stuff is, you know, the some of the people that just have roof damage, we need like, you know, uh, tops and stuff to cover the roof so the houses don't get worse. You know, we really need fresh drinking water. They don't have no, you know, no kind of, kind of um, water supplies. You know, the electricity's out. Whenever a gas station opens in certain areas, you got like a two hour wait for people trying to get gas. And you know, this is another thing why we tell our people, you know, to get out, you know, you hate to leave because you don't know what you're coming back to. But you could always replace, it was tore up. You can't replace your life. But some of our people, you know, on oxygen and, and need electricity. Some of these areas are gonna be out of electricity for a very long time. 
that's why we, you know, we have to go out and rescue our people that needs this after they decide to stay, you know. And as again, you know, as a firefighter, that's my job for us to go out, you know, and, and help out as many people as we can, you know. For Katrina, you know, I remember again, I worked 22 days and my house had a tree through the roof, but I couldn't go take care of mine because, you know, we all, we all have a calling in life and God called me to be a firefighter, and, you know, to, to help out other people, you know, and, and I've been in office three years and, you know, that, that, that was my desire, you know, you know, to help out other people. That's why I ran for the position, you know, and, um, but we have a, um, we have a tribal office that's 400 Monarch Drive in Homa, and um, we had some roof damage to the building, but uh, we have a big parking lot. And this is, um, you know, where we're working out of to try to get out to our tribal citizens. Chief, I know you have a lot to do, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, any last thoughts on, uh, again, reminding people what they can do to help? You know, it, it's, it's very busy time, right? Busy times right now, and you know, it's very hard to see, you know, again, how our people's lives change within just a few hours. But you know, and, and, and also, you know, as a native pastor, you know, we put it all in God's hands. You know, we thank Him for the ones, you know, the lives that He saved down here, and I just have to, you know, turn to Him every day, you know. For, for my strength to, to lead my people and, and do the job we do, you know, and again, thank you and, and all the listeners, you know, for your, your concerns and your prayers, you know, you know, just go to unitedhomenation.org and, you know, even if you're just sending us prayers, we appreciate it. And, um, you know, once we get power back here, you know, we can get out to, and get some of the errands clean. We can get out into more of the communities and things. But again, I just want to say thank you for letting us, you know, get our story out there. Thank you, Chief, and take care. Thank you. Y'all be blessed.